guys, welcome back to Class with Cass. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Cassandra. I'm a rising senior at Yale, and this series is meant to give you tips and tricks on how to live your best school life. Today's video is super important, and it actually links up to what I talked about a few videos ago. You can check that out here about incubation. But today, you guys, we are talking about sleep. So I'm gonna explain to you why sleep is important to me. And I am not a scientist, so this video is not going to give you like facts or figures on why sleep is beneficial for you because I'm sure that a million people have already told you that. Instead, I'm going to be real with you guys and tell you guys the benefits that I've experienced from bettering my sleep habits. So this is straight from the source. Um, everything you're about to hear is true and has been experienced by yours truly. That means I can't guarantee you like the exact benefits that I have, but I think we can all agree that sleep is good for you and you guys need more of it. So here are five really great effects that I've experienced because I've upped my sleep game and your girl is feeling rested. I find sleep to be awesome because if you're lucky like me, you might be able to fly in your dreams. I have a very distinct memory of when I was little of actually teaching myself how to fly in my dreams. Like I kept bumping my head into like the bottom of a staircase because I was trying to like get myself to go up. And ever since I mastered the art of flying in my dreams, I occasionally have the joy of experiencing this. Most of the time that I am flying in my dreams, it's it's either in like a like bad guy, like really exciting chase or um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Like, I only fly when I'm trying to catch someone or evading someone. Can, um, any dream interpreters out there leave your comments below and tell me what that means, because that would be very much appreciated. Regardless, I think flying is fun, and I don't have any, like, solid tips and tricks on how to fly in your dreams, but I guess as a mathematician, I would say the more sleep you get, the chances are higher that you might be able to fly in your dreams. So give it a shot. Number two, inspiration. So this point links up to the incubation that I talked about in this video. You see, even when you're not consciously thinking about a creative project or essay that you're working on, trust me, it is in your subconscious. This process of incubation becomes even more evident in the dream world. For example, when I was in elementary school, I wanted to enter this writing contest that my local library hosted. I was thinking about it all day long and struggling to come up with like a good storyline, a good concept, but I just, nothing came to my brain. And one night I dreamed that there was a horse and that there was a boy and that someone in this boy's family was sick and he needed to conquer his fear of riding horses to ride to the nearest town and save this person's life. I woke up, I wrote it down right away, I submitted it into this um, contest, and lo and behold, I won second place. I'm just thankful to God that he gave me that divine inspiration in my sleep. And not only for that, but for countless other stories. I mean, ideas for poetry, for plays, for short stories, for novels. I just think it's like so fun when your other self, your dream self, is just like living her best life, her wildest life, and I get to like experience a little snippet of that and be inspired by that and take that with me back into the real world. Three, you can solve problems faster. So once I struggled with one of these, they're like little 3D abstract puzzles where you're supposed to like try to get one piece to fit into a certain place. For days and days, I grappled with it. But I was so frustrated, I just decided to put it down one night and just like go to sleep, forget about it, whatever. Towards the end of the night, I started playing with the toy inside of my dream. I looked at the puzzle in my dream and I wondered, huh, if I move this piece here, I wonder what would happen. And I never tried that move in real life, so I didn't even know if that was like physically possible. In my dream, it clicked into place and I woke up so excited. I grabbed the piece, I tried the move and bam, it worked. And I was just, I was shook. I like solved that puzzle in my dream. And that was not the only time that I've solved problems in my dreams. I've 
solve like complex calculus problems in my dreams. I've spoken in fluent Spanish or at least what I think is fluent Spanish. Like the list goes on and on. For a long time I was also playing this like connect the dots game on my phone um, where you like connect two colored dots and I started to dream about those too and I would continuously solve puzzles in my dream. The thing is it's not unique to me like this this whatever you call this process like it's been tested and uh in many people many many times. I'll drop a link to a New Yorker article in the description below that talks about this experiment where people uh, who were playing Tetris a lot in the day started dreaming of like moving these shapes around in their head at night. It's super interesting, you guys, check it out. So basically, if you want this like kind of magical ability to solve puzzles um, effortlessly, like go to sleep. Number four, I am fully rested and in a way better mood. I mean, obviously, like you've heard this one before, but I want you to know from like the bottom of my heart, it is true. You are much better equipped to take on the day when you have had a full night's rest. I think the key here is to find out how many hours of sleep work best for you. I know people who have sort of experimented with like the hours and the minutes that they go to sleep for, that they're in bed for, and they found it to like the pre precise minute or like 15 minute interval. For me, I believe the optimum amount of sleep is between eight and nine hours. If I sleep less than that, I am grumpy and groggy and have no energy. And if I sleep more than that, I am also grumpy and groggy and have no energy. So everyone I think has that like maximum sleep level where if you hit that like beautiful, beautiful. You don't wanna go under, you don't wanna go over and you will feel truly rested. So I would say like in this period of summertime quarantine, like play around with the amount of sleep that you get, like tweak it for a few days and just see, experiment what works best for you. Five, try to go to sleep around the same time-ish every night. Honestly, I think this one is pretty key for me um, in terms of like waking up and going to sleep at the same time every day. Not only is this like actually good for you in terms of like health and rest, but like mentally, this is so important to me just to have a sense of normalcy, to have a sense of rhythm and schedule. Think of your body like a roommate, a flatmate, a sweet mate, whatever. Like imagine if your roommate went to sleep at a different time every day. Like maybe one day it was super early, like 10.30 and then the next day it was like 2 a.m. and the next day it was like 4 a.m. Like you would, as their roommate, probably go insane. So think of your body like that roommate. Like your, your body just can't take that. Like you, you'll be You'll be like, oh my God, what time is it now? Like, uh, I don't even know. Like, when am I supposed to rest? When am I supposed to be awake? Your body's gonna be confused. So don't let your body go berserk on you. Try to keep your body happy and go to sleep around the same time every night. Try, try, try your very best. And same thing with waking time. Although my guess is for most of you, it is the sleeping time that is more pressing. So in conclusion, I think we've reached a pretty obvious conclusion. Um, sleep is good for you. Not only that, it can be fun. It can help solve some problems in your life. And yeah, you will just feel so much better and so much more ready to take on whatever that day brings you. So to help build those habits. Maybe in the beginning, it might be really, really useful to keep some sort of sleep journal or download some sort of sleep app that keeps track of, you know, what time you've been going to sleep and waking up, um, just so that all of that math is off your hands. In addition to that, like you might also want to write down how waking up at a certain time made you feel, just keeping track of like, how you feel on the daily, like check in with your body in the morning. I have found that so important. I'm still learning how to do this. You know, practicing body mindfulness is, is one of the things I'm really keen on right now. So I would also encourage you guys to follow me along with that journey. Like just grab a journal and scribble down, take a few seconds, write down what you feel. 
I think your body will thank you and you're going to learn so much about yourself and just the way that you were created and how you function. So let me know if you guys have anything like nighttime routines or little habits that help you feel more fully rested. Um, another one, I'll give you a bonus. I mean, this is something that I strive for but have not been able to reach. I think it is really good for you to put away your phone or your laptop um, the last even 15 minutes ideally like 30 minutes before you go to sleep just so that blue light you know isn't in your face all the time um i have not yet successfully like implemented this into my schedule on a daily basis um but definitely a tip for you guys if you're able to take it hurrah good job for you Oh, one more tip. Wow, I'm just I'm just full of tips today. You guys are so welcome. Um, and if you can't do that last one, which is like turn off your phone, your computer, you can at least install some sort of like flux lighting app adjustment on your laptop. If you have an Apple laptop, I believe like Catalina, um, the newest like processor, whatever server, it already does this for you as in like it sort of like dims the lights um according to like what time of day it is i think um before i had this i had an uh this like app called flux that helped adjust that naturally and actually it really did help me fall asleep much quicker um and left my eyes feeling less exhausted at night so if you know something similar to that drop it in the comments below and help each other out you guys so that's it for me today. Um, thank you guys so much for watching Class with Cass. And yeah, hit subscribe so that more people can see this and get the sleep and get the rest that you all need and very so much deserve. You guys are such hard workers. Go to sleep, get some rest. I love you all. All right, that's it for me today. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Destiny. On a Vespa in a sunflower field, yeah. Warm wind blowing and birds are singing in cypress trees. Tuscany, Italy, eating carbonara and reading Machiavelli. While the world ends, that's where I will be.